everybody and welcome to Llyn Gwynant. Llyn means uh, lake in Welsh. I'm 90% sure of that. Double L Y N. Also this quite clearly isn't the best view of it but there's a very handy wall here that I can put my little mini tripod on. That's the only gripe I have about mini tripods I think is that they're, they're not big. Anyway the other day I was thinking for some reason I don't really know why I was thinking about the first pretty much the first and best piece of photography advice I ever got. I was in New Zealand nine or ten years ago, I want to say. It's before I was really into photography at all and I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. I was walking around in Wanaka with my little point and shoot and I had no idea how to take a good photo. Now you might not have heard of Wanaka if you've not been to New Zealand but basically it's where a, a lone tree in the lake is and uh, you've probably seen photos of it. It doesn't look too dissimilar to this actually, a bit grander and there's no tree in the water here, but largely similar. Anyway, I was there with my little point and shoot one morning, not really knowing what to take photos of, probably looking quite lost, to be honest. And a stranger, a guy that looked like an experienced photographer, he had a DSLR hung off each shoulder, which isn't always a sign of a good photographer, but sometimes it is. Anyway, he said the trick is not to look for a completed jigsaw, to which I responded, what? And he went on to explain that most beginner photographers, which I was at that point, kind of end up looking for a completed jigsaw or a perfect picture, something that's already perfectly put together that they just happen to have stumbled across. More often than not, it's not the case that you find those. More often than not, what you end up with is trying to find jigsaw pieces and then when you've got your pieces, then you work out how to put them together. And as soon as he said that, everything made a bit more sense to me. And to be honest, I can't quite believe I haven't shared that on this channel before. I don't think I have anyway. But yeah, that, I reckon looking back, is one of the most powerful pieces of photography advice I've ever had. And today what I'm gonna try and do is show how I would put that into practice around this lovely lake. I can't see anything yet though, so I have to have a look round. <laughs> I, uh, I just thought I'd change my shoes quickly before I set off because even though I've got brand new shoes that are designed to get muddy they've, um, they've got pretty orange laces as you can see and I don't want to look quite ready to ruin those yet. You know when you've got something new and you're just very protective of it so I... Another day, another less wet day. In my defence I thought it was going to be a lot colder today. I've had to change my coat because it's actually quite mild and um, well that means this. Got my women's trousers on as well. Anyway, uh, if you've not watched much of this channel before you might not know that quite often things go a bit wrong in my videos. Sometimes I run out of light, sometimes it starts chucking it down and sometimes I just can't find the compositions and the photos that I want to show you to demonstrate particular things. Now in the event of that happening this time what I thought I'd do is run through some previous photos of mine to explain what the hell I'm talking about. So this one, or these three that I want to show you from Italy, Lago de Braze, the Dolomites, where I was uh, last year with my brother, I wanted to show you this one because this perfectly encompasses the idea of, uh, well, the jigsaw. So in this example, the pieces of the jigsaw that I was interested in are the boats, the mountains, the reflection, and this little boathouse jetty type thing. I don't actually know what it is, to be completely honest, but some sort of building. And the reason I wanted to include that in this picture or these pictures is because I think it gives a completely different feel to the image. If you know that there's like a, a structure, a man-made structure in a place, it can help a place feel a bit warmer than if that wasn't there. And I mean, I know the boats are man-made, but hopefully that makes sense. So knowing that I had those pieces of the jigsaw, I spent pff, half an hour, 45 minutes, probably felt like quite a bit longer to Tom to be honest, but quite a while kind of going around trying to work out what angles I wanted to take photos of to encompass all those pieces of that particular jigsaw. And if I'd just been looking at the scene without trying to break it into subjects and sub-subjects, then I might not have had that success. I might not have spent 45 minutes. I might have just walked past it thinking, oh, there's no photo here really. I can't really see any particular good photo. Similar story about a week later when I was in Slovenia, again at a lake, lots of lake stuff going on today. 
I think it's just coincidence. But uh, yeah, Lake Bled, and we we're walking through woods to get to the hill where you could see the castle and the island in Lake Bled. And I kept seeing almost perfect opportunities to capture the castle and the island in between the trees. So you almost get like a, a vignette of foliage around the island. That's what I was looking for. Couldn't find it, but I persisted. And the reason I persisted was because it became very clear that the leaves and the foliage could be a brilliant piece of the jigsaw. And uh, eventually, I ended up with something that I was quite happy with. And again, I don't think that would have happened if I was just looking for a perfect image and hadn't considered the pieces of the jigsaw individually. It's maybe not quite as good an example, that one. Now, of course, the immediate obvious question is, well, how do you work out what should be the pieces of the jigsaw? And only you can really answer that. That's just a case of working that out for yourself. But if you decide to split your image or your potential image or your scene into pieces, then at least you can start to have a conversation with yourself about what should and shouldn't be included in the image rather than just looking at the whole thing and thinking, is that a nice photo? Don't know. Well, I'm now pretty much the other side of the lake from my car, completely the other side. Uh, I've got to the end of the lake and I've not found a single thing to take a photo of. Lakes aren't typically good on sunny, windy days, which this is, as you can probably tell. The forecast, just so you know, was for a still cloudy day. I wouldn't have bothered coming here otherwise, but there we go. I, uh, I've changed my coat, as you can see. I've also changed the location. And I've changed the day, it's a, it's a completely different day. It's the next day from yesterday. I went home for some of my mum's cooking last night to see my parents, they're only about half an hour from here. And today, I've come back to one of my favorite places to shoot. And in fact, that mountain, Trifan, is one of my favorite mountains in the world. And I think, I think you can probably see why. In fact, even if you're not from here, even if you're not from the UK, chances are you've seen this place before because if your Instagram feed is anything like mine, well then 80% of the sponsored posts you see are taken here. No idea why that is, but if you're the sort of person to waste your money on sponsored Instagram posts, this seems to be a good place to do it. But that's a, another rant and another video. Anyway, the reason I've come here today is because I think this place is a good place to demonstrate what I'm on about with this jigsaw thing. So. Let's not waste any time, let's get down to it. You'll, uh, you'll have to excuse me, I seem to, be, I seem to be losing my voice. I think partly because I'm having a shouting match with these waterfalls, but they're integral to what I'm gonna talk about, so I sort of have to be, I have to be next to them. Part of my thing of trying to make all my videos outside. Going well. Anyway, the reason I think this is quite a good spot to explain this jigsaw thing is partly because of these waterfalls, which go all the way down to Ogwen, the lake down there, and form quite a nice leading line, kind of, to Trifan, the mountain that I was talking about. Behind Trifan, there's a load more mountains, and at the foot of those, right in the corner of the frame, potentially, depending on your focal length, is another lake. So there's four or five things there that make this quite a promising spot for a composition. Now, the chances are that if you walk around not looking at a photo as an incompleted jigsaw, looking at a photo as just kind of one individual frame, then you'll go around asking yourself one yes or no question with your photography, which is, is what I'm seeing in front of me a good photo? And like I said, it's a yes, no question. Sometimes in places like this, more often than not, you'll probably tell yourself yes. In other places, you'll say no. That will cost you shots, I think. But if, however, you look at each scene as an uncompleted jigsaw with elements that might be worthy of a photo, that can get you more and better photos, I think. So, for example, like I said, there are four or five things in this potential composition which could feature to some extent or not. And if you treat them individually, then you can kind of treat them like currency. You can trade them off against each other. So, for example, I might decide that the most important thing in this frame is the mountain, Trifan. And if that's the case, then I might decide to go for quite a long focal length, trade in some of the water for some more detail in the mountain. Conversely, I might decide that the water is the most important part of the frame. I might go for a wider angle to get more of the water in, which sacrifices detail in the mountain, but makes for more detail in the water. And having those conversations with yourself about what you want to include more of, what you don't want to include any of, 
and all that kind of thing. That makes, I think, for better photos. And I think that's what the guy was trying to tell me nine or 10 years ago. If you're looking at things individually, then you can make a much better assessment of a scene than if you're just asking yourself, is this a good photo or not? At the moment, it's not, because that sun is ruining everything. Right then, I think I found a pretty decent composition from here. So I'll show you on the GoPro. So as you can see from here, I can see pretty much everything that I was talking about before, all the elements. So I can see the water just here. I'm sure you can also hear it. Uh, I can see Trifan. I can see Ogwen. I can see the lake up there. I can see the mountains in the background and, oh, a sheep. I can see a sheep down there. In front of the sheet, though, there's this wall, which I think adds to the frame because it runs perfectly along from this position in a way that doesn't get in the way of the bottom or the top lake. It sort of bends round and down the hill just before the top lake, and I think that works perfectly. Some of you might actually not like the idea of having this, uh, this wall here because it's covered in a fence that looks a bit kind of... Well, it looks like it needs some TLC, to be honest. It's, it's not particularly nice, but I think that add some charm, so I like the thought of including this wall. Now, I'm gonna shoot this at a relatively standard focal length, 12 millimeters micro four thirds, which is 24 four frame equivalent. I don't wanna include loads of this water, just a flavor of the running water, and uh, that water down there is more important, to be honest, because that kind of forms a bit of a leading line to Trifan. I want to include uh, the lake there, the lake there, and these mountains, and the wall, as I said, but all of that can be done with a relatively standard focal length, which means no distortion. And uh, well, to be honest, whenever I can shoot a standard focal length and I'm happy with it, it normally means that I'm shooting something more interesting than whatever would need a really wide focal length or a really long focal length. Anyway, I'm gonna get on with it. Lots of people ask me if I use the screen to take my photos usually, and the answer is no. I do this basically just for the benefit of the GoPro. So I'm probably, well, I'm at f7.1. I might go a bit narrower than that, f8, which gives me a shutter speed of a 50th of a second. I've just got an ND4 on just to slow this water down a bit, otherwise it looks way too messy. But I'm not looking for a really long exposure. As I've said before on this channel, I'm not the biggest fan of those. Anyway, there's some light coming through on that top lake, so I'm gonna get on with it. Probably through the viewfinder, just to make sure that I get a shot first. I quite like that, and I think it's a fairly good balance of all the things that I want. I'm focusing most on the mountain, a little bit on this water, but not too much. It's why it's, why it's only appearing at the bottom of the frame. I get to have both lakes in the frame, and I really like this wall too. And I think that composition does a pretty good job of tying all those things together. You might disagree. La 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 My ears are ringing. I think I've spent too long around waterfalls today. Also, I've seen about 15 fighter jets fly through this valley today, and I've not got a single photo of one of them. Every time one has flown through, I've had the wide angle lens on. You can't exactly track when one's gonna come, so it's normally too late by the time you see it, and then you hear it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video, and uh, hopefully it's made some sense. Every time I do a video like this, I'm always wondering if it makes any sense. This one, more than most others. So, um, fingers crossed I'm making more sense to you than it initially made to me when I heard it. But ever since I've heard it, it's made a great deal of sense. So, maybe in time it'll make sense to you. I don't know. But yeah, thank you for watching, and thank you to Lumix for their continued support of this channel. And uh, next time, I'll be somewhere different for uh, one of these videos. Probably the Peak District where the first episode was, just because that's where I live. But uh, the plan is that most of them will be in different places. We'll see how that goes. Right, both my feet are soaking now, so uh, I'm gonna go and put some fresh socks on. I have fresh socks in the car and my new shoes. So, very exciting. Oh, Chinook! You see that? Oh, I've got the yeah, wide angle on again.
It's not been a great day for Fertis today. That's probably the worst of the lot. It doesn't help that they're made to blend into the environment. And on that note, I'll see you next time.